They say they've been held under house arrest for nearly 13 years. But tonight, two daughters of King Abdullah of Saudi Arabia speak on camera for the first time to this program, alleging they're being held against their will by their own father in the royal compound in Jeddah. The astonishing interview comes as the US President Barack Obama has been meeting the king 500 miles away in Radak Karaim. Fatima Manji has this exclusive report. Princess Sahar on the right with her sister, Princess Jawahir, speaking out for the first time on camera within the royal compound in Saudi Arabia. They are daughters of King Abdullah. They claim they and their other sisters, Maha and Hala, have been kept as virtual prisoners. Why are we, grown women, held against our will? And I believe that we are hostages, actually. This compound, which they filmed for us, is now their entire existence. This is the gate. Their only window onto the world is access to the internet, which they fear will be shut down after this interview. Locks from the outside. This is a risk we're taking, actually, and we're happy to do it, and we know, we, we, we understand full well the repercussions, absolutely, but we don't know what's going to happen. It's, it's horrendous. You, you're... You're cut off, you're isolated, you feel alone, you feel, uh, um, it's, it's psychologically, psychologically tormenting. Who is responsible for holding you under this effective house arrest? For sure. The, the, our father, the king, is responsible. President Obama landed in Riyadh earlier today, ahead of his meeting with their father, the king. Nobody they met at Rawdat Khuraim to discuss Syria and regional security and then had a private dinner. 500 miles away, the king's daughters say the meeting is shameful. Well, actually, any leader, uh, I think, um, meeting with, with the king or any Saudi official is responsible for what is happening in it's Saudi Arabia. It's a shame to, to, to meet such a leader that has four women, grown women, locked up just because he wants to. And especially that they speak of human rights. The princesses say they decided to go public after their father said they would never be allowed to leave. He basically threatened us. He told us that our situation will never change. And um, when he dies, our brothers can continue detaining us and continue the abuse. The king is thought to have had around 30 wives and at least 40 children. Why is it that the king, your father, would single you out out of all of his children? We've been asking him that question for over yes. 12 years and we do not get any answer. All we get is, let your mom come back, let your mom come back. Their mother, Al-Anud Al-Fayaz, is divorced from the king and now lives in London. She went public two weeks ago for the first time, and since then the princesses say their situation has deteriorated. Denied every single right. And now the right to eat and drink. We are being starved now, yes. We asked the Saudi embassy in London to respond to this claim. As yet, we haven't heard from them. Earlier in the week, they told us this is a private matter. But the princesses are very clear. Women throughout the kingdom are suffering, and they say it's a system of male guardianship which allows men to dictate a woman's every movement. We are just an example of, of, of so many, so many families, so many women go through. We're just a tiny, tiny example. If he does that to his own children, how, how do you think he's, uh, the rest of the country is? Gender apartheid, that's what it is. The princesses say the only company they have is each other. No one is allowed to visit. We all have dreams. We want to continue studying. We want to uh, work. We want to uh, live our lives normally, have the chance to marry, have children. God knows. I mean, life is full of, full of things that one would like to do. How is it you're managing to, to smile, to laugh, and to talk to me normally? I think faith. Um, I have deep faith in God, and 
and I know, I know that tomorrow is a better day, and I see the misery of others. We, we, we see how others are living, and we're grateful for everything, even the little that we have. We are grateful, and we're fighting for it, and, and we'll never stop fighting for our rights, and we'll keep, it, we'll keep fighting them with our smile, we'll keep fighting them with our tears, we'll keep fighting them with our spirits, with our hearts, and we will never stop, even if they're starving us. Never.